from air power to sea power. Remember the blistering open sequence of Steven Spielberg's World War II masterpiece, Saving Private Ryan? Well, the famous Normandy landing that finally pulled the curtains on World War II, 65 years later, amphibious assault operations have lost none of that devastating vitality. In fact, the Indian Armed Forces are now seriously looking at putting together the ability to transport a brigade group that's almost 5,000 troops across the oceans at a short notice. This for everything from military intervention to solving hostile hostage crisis situations. A resounding and controversial part of India's superpower ambitions. Shiva Roor, our defense correspondent, gets you this exclusive Headlines Today report. 5,000 combat troops armed to the teeth for military intervention across the high seas. If that sounds like something from an American war manual, take a look at these pictures. Indian soldiers storming a beach. As part of a recent war exercise, an image that could be very real because that's just how the armed forces want it. For the first time ever, the Indian Navy and Army are working together to give the country a capability often seen as controversial and strategically provocative. Headlines today has learned that the chiefs of the Army and Navy have approached the government with a plan to provide expeditionary and amphibious capabilities to a full independent brigade group. In simple terms, that's the ability to embark, transport and deliver 5,000 fully armed combat troops, tanks and weapons onto overseas territory. This means um, the deployment of your armed forces, mainly the army, at long distances, either overseas or transnationally or away from home. This can be done in two ways. It can be through airlift, which will require air bases in, in, in foreign territory, or a much simpler way is to do it by sea lift. Your ships convey your forces across long distances. The Navy currently has the capacity to transport two troop battalions, but what India needs desperately is to be able to deliver a brigade-sized force across the seas. That's real power projection. The Army currently maintains the 340 Infantry Brigade in Rajasthan and the 91 Independent Infantry Brigade in Tiruvannathapuram for amphibious operations. But the Navy cannot transport more than two battalions at a time. We already have landing ships, tank and so on. We've acquired uh, the INS Jalashwa, which can carry a thousand troops. We need more ships of that type. They are called landing, landing platforms, dock. Uh, they can carry personnel, they can carry helicopters, they can carry small craft which go from ship to shore. If there is a contingency where the Indian Armed Forces are involved or assistance is asked for, and this may not be a conflict situation, it may be even a, you know, a, a national, a, a, a natural disaster, in which case certain uh, troop levels would require to be, you know, taken out of the country's, uh, you know, territorial waters or, out, you know, outside the area. The need for an expeditionary capability is huge and necessary for a critical list of possible scenarios. Military intervention in the event of a Kargil-like scenario in any of India's island territories or friendly nations. A hostage situation in a foreign land involving Indian diaspora. A threat to India's multi-billion dollar energy investments like in Sakhal in Russia. Humanitarian rescue and post-disaster relief operations as well. The Navy will be looking to induct more vessels like the INS Jalash for large amphibious vessel and put together a comprehensive training program to synergize operations to the hilt between the Army and the Navy. Work has begun in earnest for a capability that is bound to raise several eyebrows. With Bureau Inputs, Shiv Arur headlines today. To be acknowledged as a regional power, India has to increase its sea power. That's all we have for you in this bulletin. Many thanks for watching. Up next is Headlines Tonight.